what what's the obviously you'll learn as you go but what are some ways that you can learn um to, to accelerate the learning process i guess to make sure that you're not failing in that environment but you're actually contributing um i suppose the big thing i picked up from mark as well mark Elgallon was if you're going to do plyometrics in your program is go and practice them mm -hmm. and certainly within the academy and pathways is the kids are very much visual learners so your ability to demonstrate an exercise um, is going to have a big impact on the quality of what's, what comes out the other end. So certainly simple things is just whatever lifts they are, whatever you want, you want the program is, you, don't, you, you, know, you, you may not be re very proficient at doing it, but certainly put the effort into doing it and understanding and, and why you go about it because you, you will get to the stage where you will have to demo, demo at times what would your advice be it sounded like you, you did a pretty good job selling it to, to paul ruse um how did you go about doing that that did you would you put a presentation together like for coaches that want to sell a program to a club level or junior pathways level that we need to upgrade our gym um because it's limiting the impact on the on the program what would be some strategies they could use yeah certainly i think these days um I did present at the time and found some research and some gaps and where I'd see and um, even just doing a pilot study at the time. So it started in there and I was able to do a quick pilot study and go um, this way. And like, ultimately it wasn't on their radar, but when I mentioned it, it was like, yeah, let's do it. Cause they knew it added value to the program. Um, mm. Sometimes you can be restricted by, they might think, well, where are we going to find the time for it? But if you, I sold it that we could fit it in around the program. Okay. I sold it that it would add to the program. And um, I suppose I was lucky enough that, say, Paul and Chris, they've been around fully, so they know it's part of senior programs anyway. So they could they could see the benefit in that regard. Um, what about power development? You mentioned Olympic lifting. Uh, you mentioned that you you uh, you do do with, with younger athletes. Once they've earned their right, they're doing power work. They're doing um, speed work as well. So... Uh, are there certain scores that you like to see before they start or, or movement competency you like to see before they start doing a clean or, um, or is it more just case by case on their, on how they look and their technique and how, how strong they are, like how objective is are your decision makings to progress and, and how much is it sort of subjective or, or age based? Um, it's definitely age based. Like it won't be till they're sort of that last year. Now, warm ups we'll, we'll throw in sort of progressions, regressions of a lift. We'll throw elements in, you can be lift off. Um, skill development. Yeah. Like I use it as a yeah. skill development. Like I'm, I'm not turning them into Olympic lifters. And I know people are for and against it as well. Sometimes it's for if they have earned the right, as you said, they're strong. It definitely has got a, a strength element to it for me. And um, mm. competency elements so of their front squatting at a reasonable um, weight, if they can front for a reasonable weight. For the female athletes listening in, or parents of female athletes, or coaches with female athletes, you mentioned. Uh, the importance of, of quad development for preventing knee injuries. What, what are some other things that are sort of key pillars of your focus from a uh, athlete development point of view? Um, yeah, it's definitely a different profile in the female space. Not certainly, there's a lot of the training problem you would be similar and be crossover. Um, mm -hmm. I suppose the big, the, big, the big thing that tends to hit the media now and then, the women, is obviously injuries and knees and so on. But the way I look at it is I've got a four-year-old and – she does gymnastics. My eight-year-old boy couldn't do what she does in gymnastics. Mm. When, but when I watch the women out in the field, they don't move quite the same as the men do. It mm -hmm. is different. And a little bit, I'm not sure a little that could be, they take up the game a bit later. Um, you know, it is very multifactorial. So certainly mm. having an understanding about the game and how it looks and how they move. And then, you know, you're still developing speed and power and change of direction, but is Whereas, you know, you might look at going, oh, my big rocks in the men's program is speed and acceleration, whereas in the women's program, I work a bit more on pivoting and change of direction and, you know, adding that element to it. 